Now, local news about local people. This is Newslink Indiana. Hello, I'm Chris Bavender. Thanks for joining us. Newcastle Representative Tom Saunders was in court Thursday about a deadly weekend hit and run allegedly involving a car he owns. Police believe one of Saunders' sons may have been behind the wheel, but Saunders isn't talking. Saunders owns the 1989 Buick, which police suspect was the car involved in a hit and run that killed Thomas Jackman of Newcastle. Police impounded the car after Saunders' attorney called them. A deposition of Saunders continued Thursday night at the Newcastle courts. When state legislators vote on a new budget later this spring, it may include large funding cuts to education. One area school district is preparing should those cuts occur. Newslink Indiana's Nicholas Ferreri explains. Educating East Central Indiana students isn't cheap, and the state's budget crunch won't make it any easier. Muncie Community Schools projects a $2.3 million loss in funding over the next couple years. Without an approved state budget, administrators don't know what cuts they will need to make. But whatever cuts do occur are likely to spread across all areas of the schools. I don't think anybody's going to be cut before some other group. I think it's going to be universal. I think we're going to uh, reduce staff in every one of our employee groups, administrators, teachers, secretaries, uh, cafeteria employees. Mark Burkhardt of Muncie Community Schools also says increased class sizes may become necessary. And although the new budget isn't on the books, State Representative Jack Lutz doesn't believe such drastic cuts are in the cards. I'm not going to say I'm going to support a budget that uh, is going to cut uh, spending to local schools. I, I just can't, can't see that happening. Nevertheless, Burkhardt urges concerned parents to let their voices be heard. If they do have a legitimate uh, issue, a legitimate concern with the funding that's been announced, uh, they certainly need to contact uh, their representative or their senator. While Muncie Community Schools administrators wait for a final answer on future funding, they will finalize a plan for staff reduction over the next month. In Muncie, Nicholas Ferreri, Newslink, Indiana. 90% of the Muncie Community Schools budget is spent on salaries. It was a fair of a different sort in Delaware County Thursday, one that didn't feature roller coasters and elephant ears, but rather a chance for voters to decide on their future. Newslink Indiana's Chris Wilson explains. Delaware County voters had a chance Thursday to help take voting to the next level. Representatives from several companies with state-of-the-art voting equipment were at the Horizon Convention Center to hype their products. I want the public to, you know, really uh, express their concerns and questions because I think that will help. The Help America Vote Act requires all counties to upgrade voting systems by the end of the year. Delaware County Clerk Karen Wanger says community involvement is critical. After testing out each system, voters were given a survey to help county officials decide on which voting system to use. Major concerns were to make sure seniors and disabled voters can easily use a new touchscreen system. If you are a disabled voter, how would you rate this system? Most, however, were optimistic about the change. A uniform. I like the touchscreen. I like the fact that it is easy to um, go back and change your vote prior to the time you actually cast it. Manufacturers say there'll be plenty of training for poll workers to help ensure an easy transition. So we would train all the poll workers on how to use the system and how to interface with the uh, voters to be able to help them get through the process. Although many think the old paper ballots work just fine, they understand it's a change they need to make. I think it's kind of a shame we have to spend the money here because I don't think we've had any problems here. But that's progress. In Muncie, Chris Wilson, Newslink, Indiana. The final decision on a new system is up to Delaware County Commissioners. A traffic backup at the intersection of McGalliard and Tillotson Thursday afternoon, not because of an accident, but a traffic light update. Workers were taking down the old lights and installing new ones. The lights are working, but you'll notice a difference. Now drivers can only turn left when they have a left turn arrow. It will take at least a week until the intersection will be back to normal. The morning snow made for slick roads, as drivers quickly found out. Just before 8.30 Thursday morning, a 2003 Buick Rendezvous traveling on White River Boulevard near McKinley Avenue when it slid off the road down the embankment toward the river. Fortunately, the car stopped just eight feet short of the water. No one was injured in the accident. Carrie Hazley joins us now with a look 
at our weather and carry those slick roads. The snow was pretty to look at, but you got behind the wheel and like that driver found out. Right, but good news is that it's actually going to warm up and slick roads won't be a story as we head into the weekend. Let's go ahead though and take a look at the Almac numbers for today. We topped out at a high temperature of 28 degrees. Low temperature for the morning was 22 degrees, well below where we normally are. 36 is the average high for the state. Take a look at the forecast for Thursday night. Decreasing clouds as we head through the overnight hours. Partly cloudy skies by morning and an overnight low temperature of 18 degrees. And take a look now at precision cast clear skies all around for the rest of the night on Thursday. Set this into motion. High pressure dominates at least for the rest of the next couple of days. This will keep us clear, but it will actually keep us cooler than normal, at least as we head into tomorrow. For Friday, a few high clouds developing and not as cold a high temperature of 35 degrees. West winds from 7 to 14 miles per hour. And in the forecast for Friday night, partly cloudy skies, windy early. In fact, we can see winds top out at around 20 miles per hour. They'll be out of the west. Low temperature that night, 30 degrees. And then take a look now at the five-day forecast for Saturday, a high temperature of 43 degrees. Increasing clouds, though, and by Sunday, we could actually start to see a little bit of rain. 39 degrees for a high, though, so good news it'll keep you know, temperatures above freezing, so slick roads won't be an issue. And by the time we start our work week, temperatures in the 40s and cloudy. So it seems to be our weekend pattern lately really nice, then that rain moves right back in. Yes, sir, it does. So right. I'm ready for spring. I <laughs> definitely am too. Thanks, Carrie. It's a get out of jail card that could help criminals in Anderson stay on the straight and narrow. Newslink Indiana's Lindsay Jamison has details on the new program. It's a chance at a second chance. A test that helps determine if criminals can make it out in the real world after their time behind bars. One of the major problems of those coming out of uh, prison is that not having any support system when they get here. Margaret Dodd and Virginia Chapman, Anderson University professors, tried to make a difference in the Madison County court system with a program called Criminal Justice Specialist. CJS's mission? Help offenders rejoin society. The women work with County Court 3 Judge Thomas Newman and give a 90-minute test to offenders up for parole. Great deal of satisfaction on one hand in seeing a person succeed mm -hmm. because in the criminal justice system you don't see a whole lot of successes. The test determines the prisoner's likelihood of not landing back in jail. Judge Newman believes the CJS is so important because judges and lawyers just don't have that extra time to review the cases. Now, this is really a valuable resource to the court because, like I said, you can <laughs> never have too much information in regards to these particular people. But not all cases have happy endings. That doesn't mean that every time we work with an offender that we recommend that they have some relief on their sentence. The CJS deals mostly with C and D felonies, which include burglary and unpaid child support. Offenders usually end up in a work service program to help pay back any money they owe. In Anderson, Lindsay Jamison, Newslink, Indiana. The CGS has been reviewing cases since August and has had only one offender violate parole so far. That is Newslink Indiana. For Carrie Hazley, I'm Chris Bavender. Join us tomorrow for more news at newslinkindiana.com.